What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another week of AJ's views on orthopedic surgical considerations. Um, this week, as you can see behind me, is a little bit different than what we've done in the past, and that's because I'm on the road um, currently in LA. Um, so I want to give you out this content because I think it's definitely important. So this week, we talked about the Achilles, uh, the Achilles tendon and Achilles tendon ruptures and repairs. Um, right now, I want to dive into the topic of Achilles tendon, right? And repairs, what's what's the hot topic? We are talking about the anthrax speed bridge procedure, right? That is the hot topic right now, um, especially with Aaron Rodgers um, and what he's been doing with after having this, uh, this procedure done. Why not talk about it? So let's dive in. This week we talked about a lot of great content from a lot of different authors about the Achilles tendon and Achilles tendon repair. Either it's gonna be done, you know, minimally invasive or you know a full open procedure but specifically the speed bridge the purpose of this procedure obviously is to repair the achilles tendon after a rupture right some indications that we want to really consider is one obviously we have ruptured achilles two if you might have had a chronic insertional achilles tendinopathy or tendinitis right um there was one article that we looked at that incorporated a really great picture of an individual of, of an individual who had a chronic Achilles tendon, uh, insert, insert, Achilles, insertional Achilles tendon tendinopathy, right? And you see on the x-ray, you see there was a really bright uh, white circle really on the, right on that calcaneus, um, which is ind indicative of that chronic insertional Achilles tendinopathy. So we're gonna talk about some advantages and disadvantages of this procedure first, right? So Hoffman et al., which is the article we looked at, one of the articles we looked at this week, discussed the speed bridge procedure in grave detail, right? So here's some advantages he said they, they said, right? Um, advantage number one, the potential for a biomechanically stronger construct that improves more, potentially more load um, in special cases that it's the distal part of the Achilles that ruptures. Two, it's constantly maintaining tension on the repair, which then increases greater push-off strength. Three, the increases of bone-to-bone -bone opposition, uh, apposition, um, which allows for increased bone-to-bone, -bone, uh, tendon-to-bone healing, right? So those are three advantages, and then they discuss some disadvantages, right? Um, the configuration that they use, which is like an X configuration, can sometimes add more surgical time because it's a, a complex addition to the procedure, right? Two, there's an increased risk of potential foreign body, um, reactions due to the double suture technique um, and different anchor constructs that are presented during the procedure as well. And there's also increased complications for wounds, um, any other infections that may, may occur. And then lastly, they did say one potential disadvantage may be a greater risk of failure due to over tensioning on the ties, right? Let's say a surgeon goes through and he over tightens that, those, those sutures um, and ties them down a little bit, puts too much tension. Well we know we're gonna have some issues, right? And that may be a greater cause for a failure rate or re-tear. Re so let's talk about some complications, right? A couple of articles we looked at this week talked about some 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 complications, right? DVT being one of them, right? Every sing, Almost every single lower extremity um, surgery you looked at thus far in this, in this course has reported DVT being a potential uh, complication for any of these surgeries. Um, two, infection. Anytime you're opening up the body, there's an increased risk for infection. Um, the third thing, which is really alarming that they talked about a lot in these articles, a couple of articles, was sural, neural, sural nerve injury, right? Just because the sural nerve is where the Achilles is near the Achilles tendon, anytime you're operating near that Achilles tendon, and especially the sural nerve that goes S1, S2, goes down around the bottom of the foot um, near that plantar fascia area that you have to get to the to look at the Achilles. And lastly, they talk about potential additional scar adhesions um, for underlying tissues and underlying tendons. Um, not saying the scar nor that you have normally, but um, other scars that made from underlying tissues, right, that you have to go through, like fat. We talking about there might be some um, some adhesions from on Oh my God, the fascia, there may be some adhesion on some other subcutaneous tissue that you have to be concerned about, even if some muscle, depending on w w what we're looking at. So we wanna make sure that we're considering all these complications when talking to our patients. So let's start talking about our steps, um, right? So the first step in this procedure is there's gonna be a posterior medial, la posterior 
medial longitudinal incision made along the posterior calcaneal tuberosity and the Achilles tendon insertion, right? So we're going posterior aspect just medially, right? So if you were to split the difference between the Achilles tendon and the, um, oh my God, the medial, the medial malleolus, right? Posteriorly, you will see that's where that incision is then made. Then what happened is the Achilles tendon is not reflected and then they then the surgeon will then encounter the retrocalcaneal bursa. The reason why they touch or look at the retrocalcaneal bursa is because that helps reduce pain and increase exposure of the haglund deformity, which was prevalently talked about a lot in this week's articles. After that, the, that deformity is then resected um, and then they go into the actual speed bridge procedure of the surgery, right? Four holes are drilled uh, near the Achilles tendon footprint, um, two distally, two proximally, all four or four holes are then taped down using a swivel lock tape, which is developed by Anthrax. Um, then the proximal sutures are then lo loaded into those respective holes and then passed through into the tendon. So right there, put in those proximal holes, then pass through the tendon, they come out, those are there. Then those same steps were then replaced. The sutures go through the distal, the distal holes, come through the tendon, anchor it down, and this is when the foot is then put into plantar flexion and then the X is made. So basically like if you took a braid, if, if for those of you that might braid hair or braid someone's hair, right? If you're taking an X and you're just kind of crossing over, so you're kind of overlapping, right? You're overlapping those things together. Um, and then once that is part is done, the X procedure part is done, the suture is then tied off and then anchored down into um, a little bit of the calcaneus. So let's talk a little bit about the rehab. Um, I'm not gonna spend too much time on rehab like I did last week, but let's talk about some general stuff that we discussed this week. So weight bearing early, non-weight bearing early. A couple of the articles that I looked at said, hey, we're cool with patients maybe going to soft splint for maybe the first week to two weeks at a follow-up appointment after two weeks, we transition right into a walking boot, right? And then they can begin that partial weight bearing um, with a walking boot or with a assistive device such as crushes or cane um, or even a scooter if necessary, um, depending on the surgeon's preferences. Um, and then, right, we go into that partial weight bearing, which takes you to about five to six weeks, right? They want to partial weight bearing five to six weeks. And this is because the goal of this phase is, to, is for optimal healing of the Achilles tendon. We want to make sure the Achilles tendon is as optimal healing, is optimally healed before we start putting extra stress on it. At this three to four week mark, right, um, range of motion can start at three to four weeks, along with still being partially weight bearing, maybe starting to wean off the assisted device. And then at about eight weeks, right, we can discontinue the cam boot. Um, we can, and we can start full weight bearing and probably like a shoe. Um, depending on how this works, your surgeon, they kind of will do, you know, give recommendations based on their preferences. But I want to talk about the hot part. Let's talk about Aaron Rodgers, right? We know Aaron Rodgers right now just went underwent this speed bridge procedure for his Achilles tear that he sustained week one of the NFL football season on Monday Night Football. Um, he got his surgery out here out here in California uh, with Dr. Neil Elitrosh. And let's talk about how his thing is a little bit different from what some of our articles, our articles are saying, right? Partial weight bearing, right? We said maybe two weeks post-op. He was doing it in about a week post-op, right? Uh, let's talk about he's four weeks. He's in a shoe with a brace on um, that helps give him a slight and slight and plantar flexion. Um, and at four weeks, he was on the field throwing a couple passes, no drop backs. But then weeks after that, weeks five and six, he's doing a three step drop back and putting some weight on his involved side. What are we seeing here? This, what he's doing right now is completely different from what the literature is saying. And that's something that we as clinicians have to think about. Like, okay, what is he doing? Maybe we can't, you know, divulge um, a lot of what's going on because obviously he's an NFL athlete. There are certain things that he has that maybe uh, other athletic trainers don't have. But that's something we really need to consider. He's targeting a return to sport um, at the end of December. You know, so he's trying to get back at the end of December which puts you at about 12 to 14 weeks. That's kind of unheard of when we talk about Achilles tendon, right? We hear Achilles tendon rupture, that probably puts you out for the year. Seizing ending surgery, uh, injury, 
Now some guys have gotten back in about six, five to six months, five to seven months, but he's talking about getting back in about three to four months. That's something that we haven't heard of, and I think that this procedure and its newness, because this is my first time hearing about it, um, presents an interesting path. I know I'm going over time a little bit, but this procedure and it really presents an interesting development for our athletes that really do sustain um, Achilles tendon ruptures. Can this speed bridge procedure help minimize return to play time, right? Let's say, hey, we normally see Achilles tendon maybe six to eight months out. Maybe we're dropping that down to maybe four to six. Like, what are we seeing here? So these are some things I definitely want to think about. And if you guys watch this episode, I would love to hear your thoughts on what's going on with Aaron Rodgers right now. This is great, great, uh, great topic to talk about because he's pre presenting us with some foundational stuff that we can start to think about and we can go through with our patients. So I know I'm over time, about a minute over time that I normally am, but I really had to get this part in by A-Rod. I think it's really important for us uh, to think about and, and, to sit, and to sit on. So again, this is another episode of AJ's Views on Orthopedic Surgical Incinerations. Appreciate y'all as always.